Christine, and welcome to Capitol Tonight, a statewide look at politics. I'm Loretta Benitti, in for Tim Boyum. The mass shooting at a nightclub in Orlando, Florida, has again raised fears over terrorism. At least 50 people are dead, including the shooter, and dozens of others are injured at the hand of a gunman who pledged allegiance to the Islamic State and has said he was standing in solidarity with the Boston Marathon attackers. For more on the national security issues surrounding this event, Senator Richard Burt, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, joins us. He joins us from our Washington, D.C. Bureau. Thank you, Senator, and welcome back to the program. Good to be with you, Loretta. So, Senator Burt, let's start w with the main question. What can you tell us about this shooting? What's the latest information that you're hearing? Well, the latest information is that this seemed to have been well planned. An individual that was clearly radicalized in some way, shape, or form, probably online. And I know uh, labels will be kicked around like uh, uh, enabled, directed, or, or, or radicalized. Th those are no longer applicable. Uh, ISIL is uh, focused on driving through social media. Uh, the ability for everybody to be uh, a, an extension of the fighter arm of ISIL, uh, to commit hor hor horrific acts all around the globe. And it just so happened that uh, Orlando, Florida was the next one, and the individual uh, was an extension of ISIL's threat that they have made continually, that they want to kill Americans and they want to kill infidels, uh, whether they're in uh, Europe, the United States, or Asia. So you're saying then that the, we know that the shooter has pledged allegiance to ISIS. He, in fact, he did it in the middle of the attack, according to the FBI. You're saying we don't need to see any direct links to any cells uh, for this. This is more of a broad problem? Uh, I think what we've done is we've seen a transition over the past 12 months as America has uh, allowed ISIL to get far outside of Syria and Iraq. And they're now, uh, they now have a presence in 17 countries around the globe and growing. And from those countries, they've got external uh, attack planning cells. So though you might uh, eliminate their ability in Raqqa, Syria, you may not eliminate their ability to uh, put social media that radicalizes people up on, on Facebook and other uh, uh, social media outlets. Um, you can reach many people in America that uh, sit and watch hours after hours of radical uh, productions that ISIL puts together. Um, there's really no difference in uh, how they recruit individuals to carry out acts in the United States and how they recruit fighters. Uh, to travel to Syria and Iraq to uh, uh, kill infidels there. So we know that the FBI actually interviewed this man on more than one occasion, and there's a lot of questions about how we knew about him, and yet he was still able to carry this out. What are your thoughts on this? Well, let's say that uh, the FBI was tipped off by some of his coworkers at some of the language that he used. The FBI uh, interviewed him and reviewed his, uh, his, his case file for over six months. At the end of that process, they came to the conclusion that this was not an individual that raised to the level of concern to have either additional surveillance uh, or even the concern that we needed to watch his travel. Um, now, there was a second pass that the FBI made at him almost a year later, a year and a half later. Uh, because of his association with another individual. It wasn't targeted at the shooter, but it was targeted at, at, a, at a casual acquaintance of his, and it was determined that they didn't know each other very well, therefore there wasn't any need to reassess uh, whether there was a level of radicalization there. So we have to trust the FBI interviewers. They're the professionals. It's not those of us that go on TV and, and comment on it. They're the ones that understand the right questions and what are the right answers. And in this case, I think they got the right answers to the questions they asked. What does this incident do for the battle with ISIS? Does it strengthen their resolve? Well, let me say this. On the battlefield, we've reduced the size of uh, the ISIL uh, army. Uh, they're probably down maybe as much as seven to 10,000 fighters. Um, but while we've done that in a concentrated uh, coalition effort, their presence around the world has grown and their intent and capabilities are even greater. So uh, 
we've gone over the last 12 months from where I would look at a handful of uh, potential threats every day uh, to now uh, it's hard to find a country in Europe or the United States, uh, uh, a location of major city that's not the target of uh, a terrorist, potential terrorist act every day. And uh, so they've actually grown in their ability to, to reach the globe with terror uh, and reduced uh, in size in Syria and Iraq. So were we expecting or prepared that there could be an attack like this in, in the United States? Did, did we have intelligence that suggested something like this could happen? Well, I, I've, I've said on uh, Time Warner News and I've said on uh, most outlets over the past 12 months, it was just a matter of time. Uh, since January of last year, the FBI has arrested and prosecuted 81 individuals in the United States that intended to carry out some type of terrorist act. Um, we've missed uh, two up till uh, Orlando, Florida. This is the third one. And this was horrific, make no mistake about it. But any of the other 81 could have been just as big if the FBI had not penetrated it. And what's happened over the last year is we've taken some of the tools away from law enforcement that they use to prevent uh, attacks. Uh, we've got to have a serious discussion as to whether we want those tools back or, or whether in fact there are more tools that we can provide law enforcement uh, to get ahead of the next attack, wherever that might be. Tools like what? Excuse me? Tools like what? What, what have we taken away that you think could have helped? Uh, we took away the law enforcement's ability uh, to look uh, into communications further than just the conversation between two individuals. Uh, before we could look at the conversation between two individuals and then we could look back at the individual uh, that was talked to and we could see other conversations that they had had. So maybe the connection to ISIL wasn't a direct communication but with, maybe it was through a third party or a fourth party. And without the ability to look that deep, uh, we might not catch a potential terrorist act in the planning stages. And that was something that uh, Congress uh, and the White House eliminated law enforcement's ability to utilize. So this was a targeted at attack against the LGBT community. Um, seeing a targeted attack like this, is, is this something that we're, we're seeing plans being made for this type of a, attack? Well, one has to speculate right now because there's not enough information, but let me suggest to you um, that the LGBT community is not highly thought of within ISIL. Uh, you might remember that uh, on one occasion ISIL uh, fighters threw uh, openly gay individuals off a multi-story building. Um, so we shouldn't be surprised if this is in fact the target of an attack. Uh, just simply because of uh, the beliefs of ISIL. I think this is an area that we've got to be uh, extremely concerned with because uh, in America we embrace all uh, forms of religion, we embrace all, uh, all forms of, of what people think, um, and, and that makes us very vulnerable to a, uh, to a religion or at least the practice of a religion um, that uh, if you don't believe what they believe, uh, then you're the subject of, of a potential attack. So is there an answer in the short term? When we see one individual able to carry out a mass shooting like this where you know, 50 people are killed, is there an answer for folks out there who are, who are nervous after something like this has happened? Um, if you see something, you need to say something. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, you need to have confidence in law enforcement, local and federal law enforcement. Um, they've, they're working together better than they ever have been. You've got to uh, rely on the intelligence community both domestically and abroad to make sure that we're picking up the right indications uh, uh, that are out there. But at the end of the day, you've got to have a strategy outside of the United States to take ISIL on. We're in a war with terrorists. Uh, I know there's some in this town that don't want to call it that. But the reality is that these people are out to kill us. And the only way that we can fulfill the commitment to the American people to defend them is to go where the terrorists are and eliminate their ability 
to put out the social media radicalization that they put out, uh, to make sure we take away the safe havens that they plan and communicate with terrorists here in the United States and around the globe. And up till this point, uh, the administration has been unwilling to have a strategy like